German nominative case, nominative. In today's video, I will explain you when you have to use the nominative case, what is the nominative case, and also that you sometimes have two nouns or two pronouns in the same sentence that are both nominative case. Hi, my name is Jan and I'm your German teacher here on Easy Deutsch, your YouTube channel for German grammar. Today's topic is cases and furthermore the nominative case. Cases are something like the holy grail for many uh, German students, but trust me, it's easier than you think. With my ebook, Nominative, Acquisitive, Dative, or genitive, no problem. I will show you now when you have to use the nominative case and what else you have to pay attention to. So let's switch into my ebook. So we're here now in my ebook about the German cases. Today's topic is the nominative case. So let's have a look what the nominative case actually is. The nominative case describes the base form of the noun. So it usually indicates that we are talking about the subject of the sentence. So the subject is nominative case. And if you don't know what the subject is, look for the word that tells you how to conjugate the verb, uh, the person we are talking about, the thing we are talking about, or to. This is the subject. For example, er kauft 10 Luftballons. He buys 10 air balloons. So we're talking about him. Er is the subject. You can see that we have to conjugate kaufen to buy according to er. Third person singular. That's why I use the T. So that's the subject. And the subject is nominative case at all times. You've probably heard that already that you can ask for the cases with some certain questions. These questions for nominative case are where and was, so who or what. Attention here, forget those questions. If you're not a native speaker, they are of absolutely no use for you. And even if you're a native speaker, I'm not sure why you're watching this in English. It's in German as well, my German YouTube channel. Uh, but even then, it's not very helpful. That's a very old way of teaching it. It has some flaws, so I recommend you just forget about those questions, except for the genitive case. In nominative, accusative, dative, don't do it with the question. It will more confuse you than it will help you. But let's have a, look, a few more looks at a few more examples for nominative case. Das Pferd ist weiß, so the horse is white. Die Frau schenkt dem Mann die Fußballtickets, so the woman gives the football tickets to the man as a present. Den Ball hat der Junge zum Geburtstag bekommen. Word by word, the ball, the guy or the boy got uh, for his birthday. So here, green is always the subject. And you can see here, different from English, the subject does not have to be in front of the verb necessarily. It is there most of the time, but it doesn't have to be there. So that's why I always pay attention. It may be behind the verb. If you're looking, what's the nominative case here? What is the subject? It doesn't have to be here in front. And we do not have to do this separated by comma. Like in English, you have to do the ball, comma, the guy or the boy got for his birthday. Not in German. Verb always second position and no commas there. The subject simply moves behind the verb if there is something else in position one. I also have an entire video on where is the subject that I will link for you in the info cards here. 
And you probably guessed that there is declension. So you can see here, this is the base form. So the base form is usually what you learn first, and that's the nominative version of all the articles. I view the definite and indefinite article as an example, but I will link my playlist for all the articles in the info cards because there's no time to give you the version of all the different articles here. You will find them in all cases in the dedicated videos about the articles. So the base form in, with the definite article is del, di, das, and in plural we have di. Let's have a look at the use of the nominative case. We already talked about the use as a subject. So the subject is always nominative. There is no exception for this, but you also have to use it as a so-called subject complement. That sounds more complicated than it is. The verbs sein, werden, scheinen, heißen and Bleiben use so-called subject complements or nominative complements. This means you have two nouns or pronouns in nominative case there. And I will explain you right now why it is like this. Let's have a look at the example, du bist ein guter Schüler. So you are a good student. We have du, that's the subject. That's why we a conjugated bist and a good student. That's also nominative case because of the verb to be sign. Well, why do we do this? You and student, that's the same person, right? And shouldn't we get the same person, shouldn't the same person get the same case? Because it's pretty much exchangeable, yes. So if the object and the subject is the same person, it's both nominative case. And this is the case for those verbs. On the more advanced level, you will find very few more words that uh, work like this or can work like this. But those are the ones that you need right from the start. And it's also the system behind that is always the same. The subject and the second noun aren't two different things. It's the same person, the same thing, and they get the same case. It's the same here. Er ist der Beste. He is the best. He and the best, it's the same person we're talking about. Same case. Du willst ein Lehrer werden. So you want to become a teacher. Here we have the verb werden that does the same thing. There's also a modal verb, but remember from my modal verb lesson, modal verbs don't change the action. They just change the setup, so the how, but not the action itself. So you and teacher is still the same person, so the same case. Where you have to pay attention is if you have actually a preposition there. So there are a few more examples here. If you have a preposition in between, then the preposition overrules. Because if you've watched my preposition videos or have checked out my preposition ebook, you've learned the preposition always gets what the preposition wants if it comes to the cases. The preposition always determines which case we have to use after it. So the preposition overrules the rule of the verb. That's why ich bin in der Kirche. I am word by word in the church, in the church. Here it is dative case because of the preposition in. It's a position, so dative. But it's also pretty obvious that I and church, we're not the same thing, right? I'm not a church. <laughs> so the you can see that simply from the sense that is behind the two nominative nouns or pronouns is it must be the same person or same thing to be both nominative. In the moment, it's not the same thing. It will be not two times nominative. And the preposition here is causing that we do not have the second nominative here, apart from K 
Kirche and ich not being the same person or thing. We also use the nominative case after als or we in some certain situations. If you're still a beginner, then you can skip this part if you want to. But if you want to listen to it, to just make it complete because you will see it right from the beginning, you will probably just not use it too much uh, from the beginning. We use, after all prepositions, usually anything but not the nominative case. It's different for als and we. In the rare case, we use them as preposition. They're usually followed, pay attention, by the same case to the word they're referring to. So this is usually the nominative case, but doesn't have to be. So let's have a look at a few examples. Er arbeitet als Hausmeister. He works as a facility manager. The same logic applies here. He and the facility manager, it's the same person. That's why same case. With other prepositions like we've seen before in, that's not possible that we're still talking about the same person here. And that's why if it's the same person, we stick to the same case. So if a noun is the same person like the subject, then we stick to the same case here with als and wie. Also, sie findet als Kellnerin einfach keine Arbeit. So she can't find a job as a waitress. She and waitress, that's the same person. So same case. Er singt wie ein großer Opernsänger. So he sings like a famous or big singer in the opera. Something like that. And that's, again, he and the singer is the same person. This is pretty much when we use this as preposition. We very often use it as conjunction then it's obviously not triggering any case because conjunctions, connectors don't trigger any case. Easy for you to identify is simply the reference word is not a noun. So it's rather a whole sentence. And where you have to be careful, what I mentioned before, it's not always triggering the nominative case because the rule for those two is it triggers the same case as the reference word. Ich finde ihn als Lehrer sehr gut. So I like him as a teacher. Ihn, him, and teacher, same person, so same case. But here, it's already accusative case. It's not he anymore in English, too. It's now him. That is nothing else than cases, accusative case in this situation here. And that's why Lehrer has to be accusative case, too. Aber als Menschen mag ich ihn nicht. Here also, that's the same thing. In and Mensch is the same person and it's the same case here with als. So als triggers the same case as the reference word. That's what actually makes it more advanced. So this is something you will see from B2 and above. This one you will see right from the beginning. So here you have to check it out. Same person, same case, nominative case, because it refers to the subject. If you have any further questions about the nominative case, please do not hesitate to write them in the comments below. Also, if you want to master all the cases and you also want to support me and my YouTube channel, the ebook that I've just used for this video, you can find this in the video description description after you went through this ebook i guarantee you you will understand the german cases and how they work i'm very confident about it because i will give you your money back in case that's not true so check out my ebook in the video uh, description they will also find many more ebooks about german grammar many exercises so that you can also practice what you've learned in all of my videos. And if you've learned a lot, I hope I will see you again in one of my other videos. And until then, viel Spaß und Erfolg beim Deutschlernen.